Greetings once again and God's blessing to you. This is Father John Karapi with another episode of Weekly Wisdom. This week we're going to continue on the theme from last week of the Agatistos hymn. And I'm going to just go through uh, the 24 uh, verses of the entire Agatistos hymn. And it'll be a kind of a prayer. We'll offer this together uh, to our Blessed Mother. I'm, I'm lifting up all your intentions. So whatever you want to lift up to the Mother of God as your intention this May in, in, in the offering of this magnificently beautiful hymn from the Byzantine Church and the other Eastern Rite churches, um, we'll unite our intentions, and, and I'll offer that up uh, to God through Our Lady. So I'm going to go through all, all 12 of these now, and we'll just pray it. This will be a prayer, your prayer and mine, together. Blessed is our God, always now and forevermore. Amen. O heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, you are everywhere present and fit all things together. Treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell within us. Cleanse us of all stain, and save our souls, O gracious one. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us of our sins. O Master, forgive our transgressions. O Holy One, come to us and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. As soon as the angel had received his command, he hastened to Joseph's house and said to the ever-Virgin, Behold, heaven was brought down to earth when the word himself was fully contained in you. Now that I see him in your womb taking a servant's form, I cry out to you in wonder. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. An archangel was sent from heaven to greet the mother of God. And as he saw you assuming a body at the sound of his bodiless voice, O Lord, he stood wrapped in amazement and cried out to her in these words, Hail, O you through whom joy will shine forth. Hail, O you through whom the curse will disappear. Hail, O restoration of the fallen Adam. Hail, O redemption of the tears of Eve. Hail, O peak above the reach of human thought. Hail, O depth even beyond the sight of angels. Hail, O you who have become a kingly throne. Hail, O you who carry him who carries all. Hail, O star who manifest the Son. Hail, O womb of the divine incarnation. Hail, O you through whom creation is renewed. Hail, O you through whom the Creator becomes a babe. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. Knowing that she was a virgin, the Blessed One courageously answered the angel, your surprising words seem hard for my mind to accept. How can you speak of a birth that is to come from a conception without seed? And why do you cry, 
Alleluia. Trying to grasp the meaning of this mystery, the Virgin asked the Holy Mystery, the Virgin asked the Holy Messenger, how is it possible that a son be born from a virginal womb? Tell me. And he answered her with awe, crying out in these words, Hail, O hidden sense of the ineffable plan. Hail, O belief in silence that must be. Hail, O forecast of the marvels of Christ. Hail, O fountainhead of truths concerning him. Hail, celestial ladder by whom God came down. Hail, O bridge leading earthly ones to heaven. Hail, O wonder ever thrilling to the angels. Hail, O wound ever hurting to the demons. Hail, O you who gave birth to, birth to light ineffably. Hail, O you who told no one how it was done. Hail, O you who surpassed the wisdom of the wise. Hail, O you who enlighten faithful mind. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. When the power of the Most High overshadowed the one who had never known the nuptial bed, her fruitful womb conceived and she became for all a delicious field for those who wish to reap salvation by singing Alleluia. Pregnant with God, the virgin hastened to Elizabeth. Her unborn child rejoiced, immediately knowing her embrace. Bouncing and singing, he cried out to the mother of God, Hail, O tendril whose bud shall not wilt. Hail, O soil whose fruit shall not perish. Hail, O tender of mankind's loving tender. Hail, O gardener of the gardener of life. Hail, O earth, who yielded abundant mercies. Hail, O table full laden with appeasement. Hail, for you have greened anew the pastures of delight. Hail, for you have prepared a haven for souls. Hail, acceptable incense of prayer. Hail, expiation of the whole universe. Hail, O you favor of God to mortal man. Hail, O you trust of mortals before God. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. Filled with a storm of contradictory thoughts, the wise Joseph was greatly disturbed. Until then, he had seen you a virgin, and now he suspected you of secret guilt. All, bl all blameless one. Learning that your conception was of the Holy Spirit, he cried out, Alleluia. The shepherds heard the angels singing hymns of praise of the coming of Christ in the flesh. And running to him as to a shepherd, they saw him as a spotless lamb grazing at Mary's breast. They sang a hymn to her and said, Hail, O mother of lamb and shepherd, hail, O fold of rational sheep, hail, O protection against unseen foes, hail, O key to the door of paradise, hail, for the heavenly rejoice with the earth, hail, for the earthly meet the heavens in song, hail, the unsilenced voice of the apostles, hail, the undaunted might of martyrs. Hail, O steadfast foundation of faith. Hail, O shining emblem of grace. Hail, O you through whom death was despoiled. Hail, O you through whom we were clothed with glory. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. When they saw the star moved by God, the Magi followed its glittering light. Using it as a beacon, they found through it the mighty king. And reaching the one beyond all reach, they rejoiced and cried out to him, Alleluia. 
the sons of Chaldea saw in the virgin's hand the ones whose hands had fashioned men. And acknowledging him as the master, although he had taken the form of a servant, they hastened to honor him with their gifts, and they cried out to the Blessed One, Hail, O Mother of the Star without setting! Hail, O Radiance of the Mystical Day! Hail, O you who quenched the flame of error! Hail, O Light of those who search the Trinity! Hail, O you who unthrone the enemy of men! Hail, O you who showed forth Christ, the Lord and lover of mankind. Hail, O you who cleansed us from the stain of pagan worship. Hail, O you who saved us from the mire of evil deeds. Hail, O you who made cease the cult of fire. Hail, O you who guide the faithful toward wisdom. Hail, O you delight of all the nations. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. The Magi become God-bearing heralds. They return to Babylon, conforming to your command, announcing you, the Christ, to all, and leaving Herod as a fool who did not know how to sing, Alleluia. Illuminating Egypt with the light of truth, you cast away the darkness of error, for the idols unable to stand your might fell down, and those who had been delivered from them cried out to the Mother of God, Hail, O resurrection of mankind! Hail, O downfall of the demons! Hail, O you who crushed the error of deceit! Hail, O you who exposed the fraud of idols! Hail, O sea, who drowned the symbolic pharaoh. Hail, O rock, who quenched those who thirst for life. Hail, O pillar of fire, who guided those in darkness. Hail, O shelter of the world, wider than the clouds. Hail, O food, who took the place of manna. Hail, O handmaid of holy delight. Hail, O land, of the promised good. Hail, O you who flow with milk and honey. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. As Simeon was about to leave the present deceitful world, you were entrusted to him as an infant, but you, O Lord, made yourself known to him as the perfect God. Wherefore he marveled at your wisdom beyond words and cried out, Alleluia. The Creator displayed a new creation to us who had come from him. He came forth from a womb that had received no seed, and he left intact as it had been, so that at the sight of this marvel we would sing to her and cry out, Hail, O blossom of incorruption! Hail, O crown! of self-mastery. Hail, O you who shone forth as a sign of resurrection. Hail, O you who displayed the life of angels. Hail, fruitful tree from whom believers feed. Hail, shady glen where many are sheltered. Hail, O you who have borne the guide of the lost. Hail, source of life to the captives' release. Hail, O you who unsettled even the just judge. Hail, indulgence of many who have fallen. Hail, O stone for those who lack freedom to speak. Hail, O tenderness who exceed all desire. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. Now that we have seen this strange birth, let us estrange ourselves from the world and turn our minds to heaven. Indeed, it is for this that the God Most High appeared on earth as a lowly man, desiring to draw up to heaven those who cry out to him, Alleluia. While fully present amid those below, 
the uncircumscribed word was in no way absent from those above. For what happened was a divine condescension and not a moving from one place to another. And it was a birth from a virgin inspired by God who heard these words. Hail, O space of the spaceless God. Hail, O gate of the sublime mystery. Hail, O message unsure to men without faith. Hail, O glory most certain to those who believe. Hail, O sacred chariot of the one above the cherubim. Hail, perfect dwelling of the one above the seraphim. Hail, O you who reconciled opposites. Hail, O you who combined maidenhood and motherhood. Hail, O you through whom paradise was opened. Hail, O key to the kingdom of Christ. Hail, O hope for the angel ages of bliss. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. The whole order of the angels marveled at the great work of your becoming man, O Lord. For they saw the one inaccessible as God become a man accessible to all. Living with us and hearing us cry out, Alleluia. O Mother of God, we see the best of speakers become as mute as fish in your regard. For they could not explain how you could give birth while remaining a virgin. As for us, while marveling at the mystery, we cry out to you with faith. Hail, O container of God's wisdom. Hail, O treasury of his providence. Hail, O reproof of foolish philosophers. Hail, O confusion of speechless wise men. Hail, for you perplexed the inquisitive minds. Hail, for you dried up the inventors of myths. Hail, for you ripped the Athenians' meshes. Hail, for you filled the fishermen's nets. Hail, O retriever from the abyss of ignorance. Hail, O lamplight of knowledge to many. Hail, O ship for those who seek salvation. Hail, O harbor for the sailors of life. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. Desiring to save the world, the creator of all came down to it of his own will. Being at the same time our shepherd and our God, he appeared among us. And so the light called upon the like, and as God he heard, Alleluia. O Virgin Mother of God, you are the strength of virgins and of all those who have recourse to you. For the Maker of heaven and earth covered you with his shadow. O Pure One, and he came down to dwell in your womb and taught us all to cry out to you, Hail, O Pillar of Virginity. Hail, O gateway of salvation. Hail, O principle of the new creation. Hail, O dispenser of God's bounties. Hail, for you restored those born in shame. Hail, for you gave sense to those who had lost it. Hail, O you who stopped the corrupter of minds. Hail, O you who bore the sower of chastity. Hail, holy chamber of virginal wedlock. Hail, O you who joined the faithful with God. Hail, O gracious foster mother of virgins. Hail, O bridesmaid of holy souls. Hail, O bride and maiden ever pure. Because he wa wished to grant release from all the ancient debts, the one who pays men's dues came down himself to those who had spurned his grace. He tore up their obligations and heard from all of them this cry, Alleluia. 
by singing praise of your maternity, we all exalt you as a spiritual temple, O Mother of God. For the one who dwelt with, within your womb, the Lord who holds all things in his hands, sanctified you, glorified you, and taught all men to sing to you. Hail, O tabernacle of God, the Word. Hail, O Holy One, more holy than the saints. Hail, O ark that the Spirit has gilded. Hail, inexhaustible treasure of life. Hail, precious crown of rightful authorities. Hail, sacred glory of reverend priests. Hail, unshakable tower of the church. Hail, unbreachable wall of the kingdom. Hail, O you through whom the trophies are raised. Hail, O you through whom the enemies are routed. Hail, O heating of my body. Hail, O salvation of my soul. Hail, O bride and maiden, ever pure. O mother, worthy of all praise, you who have given birth to the word, the holiest of the holy, accept this present offering, deliver all men from every affliction, and save from the future punishment those who cry out to you. Alleluia. Gabriel was rapt in amazement as he beheld your virginity and the splendor of your purity, O Mother of God. And he cried out to you, By what name shall I call you? I am bewildered, I am lost. I shall greet you as I was commanded to do. Hail, O woman full of grace. Glory to you, O Christ, our God and our hope. Glory to you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of your most pure Mother and of all the holy, glorious, and illustrious Apostles, through the prayers of all the saints, for the gracious one who loves mankind. And so ends the beautiful Akatistos hymn in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is a devotion from the Byzantine Church, uh, the various Eastern rites, both unit and separated, the Russian Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, uh, all of these uh, Eastern churches love the Blessed Mother, as we do uh, in, in the Latin rite. Um, that should be enough for us uh, to, to proceed toward unity. You know, it's a great scandal, a really great scandal, that such a division uh, could have existed for more than ten centuries. Uh, I don't blame one side or the other as... Um, Pope John Paul used to say, uh, often enough, uh, both sides were, were at fault. It's the nature of the fallen nature of man um, to bicker, to argue, uh, to easily be divided. But we have so much to unite us. And I believe that the Blessed Mother will be the, the focal point. Uh, she'll lead us uh, to the Eucharist. Uh, which certainly is something that the Eastern churches uh, love in their own tradition, as, as we do in our tradition. But that's the unifying point, the person of Christ himself uh, made present uh, in the Holy Eucharist, the, the very same sacrifice of Calvary offered in an unbloody manner in the Holy Eucharist. Our Lady will lead us, East and West, she'll lead us to Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. That's what will affect Unity. What will affect unity is Christ himself, the truth. Now remember this. There is no unity possible outside of the truth. Unity subsists in truth. Um, it's a false ecumenism that tries to water down the truth uh, in order to affect unity. Uh, the way to affect unity 
is by presenting the truth in a loving way, undiminished, untarnished, without any distortion or diminution, without destroying it, uh, the splendor of truth. When we present the truth in a clear way, an unambiguous way, a courageous way, that acts as a unifying force. It is the only way that there will be ultimately unity among the separated churches, the, the closest to us are the Russian Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, we're very close. We believe almost everything the same, and we really pray uh, for that unity. Um, I, I consider myself impoverished because uh, we don't have our brothers and sisters from the Orthodox churches uh, in, in union with us. We need that, and they're impoverished too. Uh, because uh, they don't have us. It's not either or. It's both. And both are a valid part of the tradition of the church, both the liturgical tradition, theological traditions, devotional tradition. It's all part of the one church. Not either or. It is both. And we have to come to that unity. I think one of the best ways to do it is through the Blessed Mother, and through the unity that come, can come through shared devotion. That's why the Holy Father John Paul wanted to have the Agatistos hymn, a hymn from the East, uh, sung on the vigil of the Immaculate Conception in the great Jubilee year of 2000. And it's something we would do, uh, we would do well to remember. So perhaps uh, you will uh, once again pray this Agatistos hymn, um, print a copy of it out, uh, pray it prayerfully, meditatively. Uh, I think it will help you to enter more deeply into the mystery of the Mother of God. And if you enter more deeply into the mystery of the Theotokos, the God-bearer, Mary, then you will surely enter more deeply into the mystery of Christ. And as you enter more deeply into the mystery of Christ, that will bring you more deeply into the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is the divine economia of salvation. We go to the Father through, with, and in the Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Agatistos hymn helps us to do this in a devotional way, in a beautiful way. And so we, we pay honor to Mary, our mother, the mother of God. God bless you. God love you. And goodbye.